Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to Earth Juice. This week we're looking at vampire aphids and we'll be discussing just why animals will cannibalise each other. The pea aphid is a major pest. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it feasts mainly on peas and that kind of vegetation. However, researchers studying this little critter have found that they're also tucking into each other. Professor Simon Leather from Harper Adams University in Newport, UK was studying these pea aphid cultures when he felt a sharp pain in his wrist. Looking down, he noticed that one of the aphids was sucking his blood. Initially, Professor Leather put it down to some kind of freak accident. He was covered in the scent of the pea plant and he assumed that the aphid had just mistaken him for its normal dinner. However, he then discussed it with one of his students and they said that in the lab they'd observe the young aphids actually drinking each other's blood. Of course, hearing that is like a red rag to a bull to a scientist and Professor Leather wanted to find out more. So what he did was he took a mother and her two offspring and placed them on different plants. One set he placed on well-watered broad bean leaves, the other on more desiccated broad beans. They then added some unrelated aphids to both of the groups, sat back and watched what happened. The first thing that they noted was that those aphids on the more desiccated plants were more likely to commit acts of cannibalism than those on well-watered plants, suggesting that this cannibalism is perhaps a response to a lack of food. The team also noticed that the young aphids cannibalise more often than the adults, and that interestingly, they tended to cannibalise more on unrelated insects, which suggests that these pea aphids have some way of telling the difference between siblings and strangers. But in a slightly macabre twist, when the aphids did feed on their brothers and sisters, when they did cannibalise them, they actually fed for longer. So why would they do that? Well, the researchers suggest it's probably to do with the genetics. Aphid brothers and sisters are actually identical clones. So by feeding on each other, they ensure the survival of the group, which is more important than individual survival. So for Professor Leather's aphids, sucking the blood of your brother or sister or even your parent is a way to survive and to hopefully pass those common genes on to the next generation. But how common is it? Just how often does cannibalism happen in the natural world? Well, it's actually pretty common, and sexual cannibalism is one of the better known. In some species of spider, such as the redback and the black widow, the female is known to eat the male after the act of copulation. And in fact, it is this very act that gives the black widow its name. So why does this occur? Well, the theory is that the older male spiders are not going to have another chance to mate, so they kind of self-sacrifice and give themselves up to be eaten. In this way, they can actually benefit their future offspring by providing nutrition for the eggs. But perhaps the most extreme form of cannibalism is siblicide in sand tiger sharks, which happens before they're even born. A female sand tiger shark will start out with as many as 12 embryos in her womb, but then a kind of prenatal dance of death occurs, each embryo fighting for supremacy and devouring the others. This slightly dark strategy means that sand tiger sharks can give birth to large young. Relatively, they're much larger than other shark species, and by having large young, that affords them some kind of protection from predators. But it's not just about being the biggest and strongest. The female, the mother, will have mated multiply, meaning that many of those embryos in her womb will have different fathers. So by eating each other and attacking each other, they're also competing to pass on their own father's genes. So while to us humans, cannibalism might seem like a bit of a freaky phenomenon, in the natural world, it's a totally valid strategy. It can keep your species alive, it ensures survival of the fittest, and it means that the dominant genes are passed on. That's this week's juice. Talking of clones like those aphids, we made a video with Wheezy Waiter, one of my all-time favourite YouTubers, all about clones in the natural world. And as ever, there's links to all of the science down in the doobly-doo below. We'll see you next time. This is a tinema stick insect. That's a stick. That is literally a stick I saw you break off a tree. Fine. This is a tinema stick insect. They've been asexually reproducing for millions of years, creating a whole new species of clones. No sex for a million years. Tough break. You should know. I live with my girlfriend.